The ocean is an incredible place. Let's keep it that way. Join us as we hunt for sustainable seafood. Your seafood choices matter for the future of ocean health. Hi, I'm Sarah Curry. In this episode, we'll be speaking to Dr. Rachel Silverstein and Chef Alan Susser. Grew up near the ocean in California. And I started scuba diving when I was around 14 and just like that was it for me. Hi, my name is Rachel Silverstein and I'm the executive director and waterkeeper for Miami Waterkeeper. I went from being an admirer and having a recreational and, and fun interaction with the ocean to having a scientific relationship and studying it and I did my PhD on coral reefs. Now as an advocate, Miami Waterkeeper is a local nonprofit focused on clean water issues and having swimmable, drinkable, fishable water in South Florida. We do outreach and education, we do scientific research, and we also do legal advocacy to make sure that people are following environmental laws. So fishing and having sustainable fisheries and water that is clean enough that you can safely eat fish out of is a key part of what we do. One thing that you really need to have healthy fish populations is you need to have habitat for the fish to live in and around. In our area in Miami and Biscayne Bay, they need healthy seagrass, they need healthy mangroves, and they need healthy coral reefs. And all three of those ecosystems are on the decline. Mangroves, mainly from development and construction, they get removed from the coastlines. They have roots that go into the water and they create sort of perfect nurseries for baby animals to live in and around and to be protected and safe from bigger fish. And then if you go out from the coastline into the middle of the bay, you have beautiful seagrass meadows. And this is sort of the next place that fish will go as they get a little bit older, they go out into the water and they live in the blades of the seagrass and it's how they're safe there. But we've been losing seagrass for the last few years. And we think that it's probably related to pollution from the land getting into the water. And Moving even further offshore, when fish get bigger, they go offshore to our coral reef and the Florida reef track that's right offshore. It's also sort of a sad story for coral reefs, particularly here in Miami, we have had major coral bleaching events, which is what happens to corals when the, the temperature gets too high or they get otherwise stressed. We've also had a major coral disease outbreak that we think started here, right near the dredging of the Port of Miami Channel and those corals are just being wiped out in a matter of weeks, and that disease is spreading throughout the entire Florida reef tract. We unfortunately still don't really understand exactly what's causing the disease, but it's very rare for a, a coral disease to affect so many different species. So if we lose the seagrass, if we lose the mangroves, if we lose the coral reef, we lose the fish also. In addition to protecting fish habitat, we need to make smart seafood choices at restaurants. Let's go find some food. I did a lot of the writing of my PhD dissertation here. Oh, really? Yeah. Well caught mahi. Sounds awesome. So you eat seafood, obviously. I try to really eat local and sustainable when I eat seafood. So I either make seafood decisions based on things that are healthy, like they don't have a lot of mercury in them, and that are also being sustainably managed and harvested. So actually mahi is one of my favorite things to eat because I know that um, you know, it's usually a good choice. Mahi-mahi can generally be considered a smart seafood choice in part because of their life history. They're short-lived, living up to five years, and reach sexual maturity at a young age. 
When they do, they release thousands of eggs every few days in their relatively long spawning season. And sometimes when you go to eat, it's hard to know how a fish has been caught. If you look at your little seafood watch guide from Monterey Bay Aquarium, sometimes, you know, a pole caught one of the species is okay, but you know, a trawl caught one isn't, and you don't know which one you're eating, and you try to ask, and, and they you know, don't they know. don't know. Yeah. We serve sustainably caught mahi here at the Cafe of Books and Books. Meet Chef Alan Susser. He's been a chef in Miami for 30 years. For me, I love fresh fish. I love locally caught sustainable fish. Not everybody does that. And to, for me, for my cooking, for what I want to present to my guests is very important. It's a challenge. It's a challenge. Getting that, that fish, working with the fishermen, working with local purveyors, getting them to understand how important it is to me, paying the price for it as well. People should care about sustainable seafood. It's really important to think about our future. We have a place on this earth and we have to mind it. We can't take it over. Thinking about sustainable seafood is thinking about our future and our grandkids' future. Supply and demand makes it hard, okay? When you have today's environment of fish and just the commoditization, everything being a commodity, that you think that's an endless supply of everything that you want all day long, any part of the time of the year, any place you want to get it. That's kind of the American way at the moment. You pay the dollar and you get anything. But in reality, you don't, okay? In reality, you want to be able to have the seasons of the year affect the flavors, affect the supplies, affect, you know, kind of being understanding of nature itself. There are times a year that some fish are available and other times, though they're available, you shouldn't pull them out of the sea. You shouldn't be fishing with them. Certain fishing techniques that overfish. So it's a respect for the community as well as the same time respect for nature. And in 2006, the federal government of the United States made the decision that all federally managed fisheries would be managed sustainably. And there's actually been recent efforts to try to change that and to go back to unsustainable fisheries management in the U.S. There have been some really great examples of states that have turned their fisheries around and really done an amazing job reviving the industry and the fish population while protecting the environment too. And in particular, Alaska has done a really great job with their wild fisheries. There's a lot that's being done now to improve seafood accountability and to know where your seafood is coming from and how it was caught and to manage the supply chains such that you know where the fish is coming from at every every port and to really reward folks who are catching fish sustainably. So people, you know, there's a market value to that and people actually pay more for fish they know is sustainably harvested. Make sure to look for U.S. wild caught and farmed seafood when you're eating out and download the Seafood Watch app to help you make smarter seafood choices. I think it's up to every person to ask in any restaurant, where's the fish coming from? Ask, and that will help the chefs know that you care. What can people in Miami do to help keep our water clean and protect coastal habitat? One of the major issues we have here that's becoming worse and worse is algae blooms. So we're actually realizing that when fertilizers that have a lot of what we call nutrients in them get into our waterways, it causes big problems. And we want to reduce fertilizers from lawns, golf courses, and so people can maintain their septic tanks, report leaks, reduce fertilizer use on their lawns, especially if they live near waterways, not fertilize before rains, don't dump things down drains, follow all fishing regulations and safe boating recommendations as well. Thanks for joining us as we continue our hunt for sustainable seafood here in Miami. And thanks to Books and Books for serving sustainable seafood. Here's what we'll be talking about in the next episode. One of the fun things I started was doing and creating a sustainable seafood dinner. I started a relationship with one of our local fishermen off of uh, Key Biscayne and got into talking with him about the challenges of sustainable seafood. And we talked about doing a dinner. I started by inviting 
two or three chefs to do this dinner with me. It became an educational tool all the way around for the chefs, for the fishermen, as well as for the guests.